you know, while I was setting up for this podcast, I was looking at some numbers around how men handle, uh, you know, loneliness and stuff. And it's like, you know, some of the stuff I talked about in my book as well, too, you know, the, the incarceration uh, rate for men is much, much higher than women for the exact same crime. In fact, women get off much more than, you know, men do, obviously. Um, and, you know, things like um, guys self-deleting themselves. Uh, I like to use the phrase taking permanent steps to a temporary problem in their life. And men are three times more likely to do this than women. Men are 10 times more likely to do this than women in a divorce. Guys generally suffer in a lot of silence. So if you know somebody right now, and you probably do, colleague, coworker, friend from the gym, guy from the dojo, maybe a guy you ride bikes with, whatever your hobbies or interests happen to be, family member, cousin, whoever it happens to be, you probably know somebody right now that's going through a divorce or dealing with some difficulties in his relationship. Give him a call. Shoot him a text. Shoot him a text. Hey, man, just wanted to check in. You know, how things going? I know shit's tough with the whole uh, breakup or the untying of the knot or whatever it happens to be. Just do a check-in, you know? Being interested and being interesting is part of forming human connections. And again, this is coming from somebody that's an introvert. I would also get very, very clear on what it is that you're looking for from a friend, from a woman, job it doesn't matter what it is in life guys get clear on what it is that you're looking for <clears throat> get very very clear on what it is that you're looking for and only allow those people i would i would rather be by myself than, than, than to surround myself with shitty people shitty friends shitty women any of those things i i just don't have maybe it's because i've gotten older and i just don't give a fuck anymore right but i think you know, when you're younger, you tend to make more concessions. It's like, ah, I've been friends with, you know, Mike since high school. So what if, you know, somebody caught him jerking off in a plant or something like that, right? You kind of make up these like weird excuses, you know. You're going to get out of life what you tolerate, right? You're going to tolerate mediocre people. If you're the smartest guy in the room, you're in the wrong room. You know, I've said this many times, say it again. Put yourself in rooms where you're not the smartest. Put yourself in events or extracurriculars or sporting you know, gigs where you're not the best, you're not the smartest, you're not the most competent. Especially if you want to learn and you want to network, you don't want to be lonely. I've never felt lonely at the dojo in any of the classes. And like legit, I went there probably thousands of times, right, over the four and a half. Four odd years that I was, uh, you know, training, doing crab, doing uh, boxing, kick, all that sort of stuff, and there was almost always somebody new. Hey, Rich, how you doing? Nice to meet you. All right, you know, because they would always pair you off, and you'd have to go and do do some exercise. Very, very easy to you know make contacts and open the doors when you get out of your own head in your own house. But if you're sitting there on your screens watching TV shows or sports video games and all that you don't allow yourself the opportunity to go out there and find interesting people doing interesting things and being interesting yourself so again you want to get very very clear on what you want from a network what you want from a friendship what you want from a woman or women whatever that happens to be and being fastidious about getting rid of the losers i get mad when i say get rid of losers hey i'm not i'm, I'm not even going to apologize for it you need to get rid of the losers in your life. You know who they are. You probably have people in your life still. Again, well, I've been friends with so-and-so since high school. So what? Really, so what? I think there's maybe two people that I still talk to from high school. And even then, it's very like sporadically and randomly. Like we shoot a text to each other. Something comes up. You know, there's a picture sent. Hey, we should get together soon, blah, blah, blah. But you never really do because you live so far apart. But these guys are cool, right? Like I keep in touch with them because they're successful and we did awesome stuff when we were younger and we're doing awesome stuff today in our own realms, in our own, you know, world, world sort of thing. But it's okay, you know, let people go that are mediocre. Let them go. Just, you don't have to make an announcement. Hey, we're not going to be friends anymore. Just don't respond to them, right? Lose their phone number. So get clear on what you want from your friends. Get clear on what you want from the network. 
get clear on what you want from a woman or women, whatever that happens to be. I can't emphasize this enough, guys. Stay away from shit people. I really can't. You need to create a vacuum, okay? Whatever it is that you're filling your time with that's making you feel lonely, you need to create a vacuum so that it can fill with something else. Vacuums fill by osmosis, right? You spend, if you take 24 hours in a day, let's say you take eight to nine of them sleeping, you take eight of them working, you take an hour or two commuting, doing miscellaneous things, grabbing a bite to eat, uh, you know, picking up some groceries, stuff like that. What are you doing with that leftover time, the extra few hours that you've got left in your day, right? Because if you're pissed off about being lonely or feeling lonely or feeling alone and you're spending your, like, I can tell you exactly what your problem is by what you're doing with your spare time. You spend it watching sports? What would you expect? Go play sports. Join a co-ed, you know, sports league. Murder ball, ball hockey, volleyball, whatever it happens to be, anything. Right. I've done all of these things. They're great exercise. They're a great way to network. There's always a, hey, let's grab a beer or a drink or some wings after this sort of thing. There's usually women involved, you know, just do a co-ed one. Um, and because, you know, it's, it's athletic, they're generally fit and reasonably attractive, you know, for the most part, you know, so trade watching sports for playing a sport. You like video games? You like playing video games? Okay, fine. Maybe a little bit of them, but all the time. I remember I was at a hospital once and um, I was skiing and I fucked up my leg. I thought it was broken or could have been uh, shattered, you know, the uh, shin or whatever. So I go to the fucking hospital. I'm sitting there waiting for two, three hours, four hours go by. There's, you know, there's all these moms coming in with their two year old with a fucking dot on their back and it's sniffle and they think they're going to die. So in Canada, healthcare is free, you know, <laughs> mostly free anyway. Not great, but mostly free. So I'm sitting there for three, four hours in a merge with what I think is a broken leg. And they put me into the room B and sitting beside me in the next room with a curtain. So you can hear everything. So the doctor goes to that kid first because he was there before me. All right. So why are you here today? What's wrong? I can't feel my knees, doc. Well, what do you mean you can't feel your knees? Well, I was sitting there playing a Warcraft raid for 12 hours and my legs, I just can't feel them. I don't know what's wrong with them. The feeling hasn't come back. And she's like, fucking move, buddy. Move your legs. Move your body. They've gone numb because you're sitting your ass in a chair doing nothing, playing video games for 12 hours. Why are you wasting my time? That's not what she said, but I could. that's what I'm thinking. And I could tell by the tone of her voice, she was probably thinking the exact same thing. But this is what happens, right? You get caught up in these worlds, these online worlds, you know, the metaverses of the you know the world today you get all caught up in it leveling up your character oh well, if i play one more raid then i can get that armor that i want and i'll get 37 gold pieces so i can get this special item and it'll improve my stamina by plus three points and minimize my defenses by this amount and we and we start calculating all this shit and trust me i know because i used to play you know these geeky games all the time too and then you're like leveling up a character to the best it can possibly be in a video game you got this dragon blow your whistle and the dragon comes flying over and you can do all this cool shit on it you're a you're a wizard warrior whatever it is you want in that video game world but in real life you're down here level up your real life character spend the same amount of time effort resources leveling up your real life character right increase the amount of money that you make increase your physical conditioning increase your competency skills in combat these are all things that are useful Having a strong, healthy body, broad shoulders, narrow waist, muscular sort of build. You know, you're interesting. You're funny. You've got a network. You do cool shit. Do you ride a motorcycle? No. Do you do rallies? Do you have nice cars? No. Do you play hockey? I don't care what it is. Yet, you know, if you're going to find yourself in a position to be interested in and be interesting, doing it in a virtual world is not going to get you what you want in the real world. And that's just a cold, hard truth about it, man. I've done both. I've done both. I've seen both and a far better to your time do it for yourself i would i would probably have a lot more money today and made a lot fewer mistakes and been further ahead had i not wasted a lot of the time that i had 
in virtual worlds, in virtual friendships, in shitty friendships, keeping shitty friends around, keeping shitty women around. Um, because it's it just boils down to raising your standards, guys. That's all it is. When you set your standards higher, when you when you raise the bar for yourself, when you raise those standards higher for you, the outcome in your life, the dividends paid are just exponential. They're off the freaking chart. You don't have to be lonely or alone or any of those things. There's there's lots and lots of really, really good men out there that are good at being men that you can form friendships and bonds with. Look, the reason why I created my own community you know, through the channel work that I do is because people were always saying, hey, let me introduce you to this. I've got this. I've got that. I'd like to hang out with you. Let's talk about this. And, you know, I'll tell you something. The guys that I've paid attention to and the guys that I've become friends with that are integrated in my community that are, that are invaluable at this point are the guys that are interesting that I'm also interested in and we do cool shit together. And, I mean, the stuff that I've posted on social media, like anywhere out there that you might have seen, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Like, that's just a highlight reel. You know, the kinds of stuff that we hang out and do is just phenomenal. It's the same thing with women too, right? Decide what you want. Do you want multiple women in your life? Do you want a woman in your life? Do you want no women in your life? Do you want to deal with it on a short-term basis or arm's length basis, dating only, you know, whatever it is you want to call? There's, there's, there's still lots of good women out there. They're not all obese, purple-haired, disagreeable, angry, mean, um, man-haters. They're not. There's a lot of those ones out there, but you don't have to spend time with them. You get to decide who you spend time with. You get to decide who you invite into your life. You get to decide who you hang out with. And making concessions by having lower standards is going to get you to shit. It's just going to get you nasty shit. I really hope you guys enjoyed that clip. If you want to watch the full length podcast, you can find that over here that clips from. If you're newer to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe over here and pin down below in the top comment. You'll find a bunch of useful links to my website, my supplement line books and a bunch of other stuff. Have an amazing day. Peace out.